We're back. We're back. The uh, Electric Batcast is back. This is uh, this is our third episode, but it's called episode two, right? <laughs> oh, gosh. This is going to be a perpetual... Uh, <laughs> it, gets, yeah. it gets complicated. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, I guess uh, uh, we have a recap. I, um, I was training for a, a grappling competition. Training hard. I was training hard. Early and, and often. You, you were uh, watching my diet. And I made it happen. I got I got the gold medal. I, I pulled it off. Um, I'm I'm really surprised that <laughs> I was able to do this, but but it happened. I'm not surprised you know? at all. <laughs> I'm so I'm just, proud of you. Look, it looked. I I was there. I was watching, filming. Thank you. Uh, yelling, I guess. Uh -huh. uh, and you, you did so well. It was so much fun to watch. Yeah. You know, you know, I was afraid I was going to be afraid that you might. I might get hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might, yeah. I don't want that. But I, uh, I, I made it happen. And man, what a great day! You and, made it look easy. And all the we had a lot of teammates that won medals, and uh, that was it a, was it was really cool. And I'm I'm really really proud of you. You that, did an amazing <laughs> thing. I, I appreciate it. Shout out to Pro Edge, uh, MMA, boxing, Muay Thai, grappling. Uh, I don't know how many things they teach there. They teach Some it all. Kickboxing. Weight training. Uh, check it out, uh, Pro Edge MMA and Boxing in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, shout out to the team and the, and the owners there and the management. Yeah. Uh, thank you for making such an awesome facility for us to train in. And if you want to train, come on out. You can. There's uh, if any kind of combat sports, they'll, yeah. they'll, they'll teach it. Do you like combat? This is your place. <laughs> they don't sponsor right us, on. but uh, they. Uh... <laughs> Uh, they really they they well they helped us out. They helped they, us they, out. They yeah. helped us out. It's a it's a great facility. Mm -hmm. uh, also, Electric Bat, best arcade in Phoenix. This just dropped like we, we ten we, minutes ago. Hot, hot we found off, out hot off the presses. Uh, Phoenix New Times named the Electric Bat Arcade the best arcade in Phoenix, Arizona. Congratulations to you. We were just congratulating me. <laughs> now we're congratulating you. Uh, you, you, thank you, you. You built an amazing thing here. And for, for those of you that don't know, this is Rachel's arcade. She, she, she built this thing before we got married. Uh, I, I'm just kind of hanging around. Uh, <laughs> But congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And how many, obviously. How many years have you won this? Uh, I think all of them. I think <laughs> all, all the, five. All the years you've been operating. <laughs> but it's, even, you know, even when you only had like 12 machines. I the best think, arcade. I think we did. But at the same time, you know, back when we only had that small room, none of these other arcades were open either. The mm -hmm. Cobra was the only other one that existed sure. at the time. And, Certainly. Uh, you know. Yeah, and no, I'm, I'm very grateful, and obviously couldn't do it without you, Chewy, Mark, John Chapel. Those, mm -hmm. you know, it takes the group and, and the people. And I mean, yucca, so, yeah, Yucca Taproom, of course. And, oh, yeah, uh, management, obviously, our, our business partners and uh, management and staff at Yucca Taproom. Thank you so much. You guys are great. Uh, they're they're basically watching the arcade when we're not there. We, yeah, we are yeah. indebted to you guys. We'll have to do something nice for Christmas. Aranda, Dane, yeah. all the people, mm -hmm. Lola. Lola. Uh, danger. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Danger. Nick Danger. All right, all right. Uh, good deal. You want to talk, talk about some pinball? I think people want. Yeah, hear, I think I think they tuned in pinball. more for for pinball. Oh, now what about this last tournament? We have tournaments every Tuesday. Yeah, this we just was had a, cool a great one. tournament. Um, over a hundred people showed up. We had some uh, some of our friends from out of town. What, yeah, what, the Tacoma guys. Tacoma guys. Pete, Pete, and his friends, and Pete won. Pete, Pete tied with John yeah. Chapel. Perfect night. What a mm -hmm. th that what a fun time. You know, some of them boys are thinking about moving here. Oh, they should. They they said every one of them said it was the best pinball arcade they've ever been to, hands down. That's a quote. Wow. I, got, I got it right here. That feels really great. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. And uh, he was drinking liquid death, so it's not like he was. Oh yeah, drunk he was just... He doesn't drink. Pete doesn't oh, drink. He's, okay. He's like me. We can we uh, keep our edge. I, although he's a lot better at pinball than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going up against John Chapel. I, I like to call him Jan Chapel. Yeah, Jan. Jan. When he's on stream, he's Jan Chapel. Yeah. Uh, thank you everybody for coming out to that uh, that tournament, making it a just a just an absolute blast. It's so much we fun. Have the, we have the best people. Yeah. 
the whole group yeah you have you have casuals playing with with serious yeah. uh, competitive pinball guys and we, we all get along and help mm-hmm. each other out and it's a, it's yeah. a fun community if you want to play pinball with us every tuesday 6 30 at the electric bat arcade come a little early to warm up and uh hang out yeah and uh grab some food we have great food great drinks uh, our bartender brandon always uh hooks up the uh the, the tiki drinks sure thing uh his new thing well kind of new he's adding uh popping bobas oh yeah you can add, add boba for a couple of bucks you can add popping bobas to anything we we saw somebody put popping bobas in their miller high life uh, yeah <laughs> you can try that too you, let's see like what uh, kind of combination you could do jaeger and boba yeah. Ooh. how about uh what is that super nasty shit uh, uh malort. malort 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 you malort want ba- it boba. tastes like band-aids and boba I tell you what, if if the boba doesn't make Malort better, I don't know what will. Uh, <laughs> special shout out to our sponsors, uh, Game Room Goodies. If you're looking for anything for your game room, pinball machines, jukeboxes, uh, what else? Uh, uh, Sk- Ski ball, air hockey, um, all things game room. Anything game room related, mm-hmm. they will take care of you. Call Aaron over at Game Room Goodies, and uh, also. If you're looking for pinball parts, Marco Specialties, everything pinball. They have everything pinball. Pinball parts, that's where we get them. Yeah, that's where we get them. It's your one-stop shop. And uh, we love those guys. Thank you so much. Can't wait to uh, hang out at the Marco booth that is returning to Expo in Chicago. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. We'll get to play the Venom Premium. That'll probably be the first place we play it. Yeah, yeah, because we're, yeah. I know we'll there play. there are none in town yet. There will be. Yeah. I know um, there there'll be an LE in town at a special location. We'll talk about later. But uh, <laughs> what <laughs> talk about talk about a special location? Yeah. Later on. Okay. Not now. Later. Okay. Um, Get you, Nancy. <laughs> right. You, so what do you want to do? You want any anything else you want to talk about before we get into the mailbag? We have some mailbag stuff here. Um, and c- congratulations on the best arcade. Well, really, congratulations you, to I you am too. Bl- I am blown away. Uh, you surprised? Absolutely blown away. I'm not surprised. I'm just <laughs> uh, blown away. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. It's great. It feels good. You know, it feels nice to. It, the bigger compliment than that was just having people come out and talk about like how much fun they have there. Like our whole crew, like. Yes. The hundred people that play with us mm-hmm. are all awesome. And I don't think that the ones that don't travel out of town, I don't think that they necessarily understand like how special that feel is that people you're there with a hundred people, mm-hmm. some of them way better than you, some of them right. not as good as you. And it really, it, it's, it feels like an awesome community. And that is a very unusual, um, that's just a, an unusual feeling in, in arcade culture. It's I think it's getting to be more right. that way in some locations. Certainly. But I think that, that that really is what makes the bat feel special. Right. And we I've I've talked to two arcades. Um, one of the owners actually came and played in one of our tournaments. Other ones we've just corresponded, uh, you know, over messaging and uh they have a hard time getting the casuals and serious competitive players to play together. They some of them have to do like separate rec leagues that you, where you don't get whopper points. So, you know, for the uh, the guys that are just having fun, and then yeah. you know. So I, I'm just glad all of our yeah we have every, a, we have a special thing yeah yeah all, all of our folks like to play together and have a good time, and they they love the competition. Mm-hmm. Mailbag time. Oh. I have a question from Rachel. You you snuck this in here. Is this you? This this is this me. Is, this is this is yeah. You did the it last Rachel. time. I thought I thought I'd uh, <laughs> add that. Uh, all right. And at the when you thought about this, you were riding in the passenger seat on the freeway. I, I guess I was driving. Though. You were driving. Yeah. And and the question's for me. How about that? <laughs> uh, you are the best marketing person in the business. Uh, I, I guess you mean the pinball business because I mean I, out there yeah. I, I couldn't do jewelry or watches or maybe I, I don't could. Know. I don't know. I'd put you up against Gary V. <laughs> Gary V. Oh man, I wish. Uh, 
for people that don't have much aptitude in this area, do you have any basic marketing techniques or tips? Uh, yeah, man, this could be like a whole podcast. I think we should do a whole podcast about marketing. We should. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of, uh, our, Not this one, though. A lot of arcades ask for some like tips. I guess, I mean, just in a, in a nutshell, uh, be yourself unless yourself is, is not cool. Yeah, if you're a jerk. And then hire somebody yeah. to do it. Uh, but, I mean, just get nail the basics. Um, you know, you have, to, you have to use social media. I know there's, some, there's still some arcade owners we know that just don't use social media. And they're like, why is nobody coming out here? You just have to be on there. You know, start out with Facebook and Instagram and then roll out from there. But if you're strong on Facebook and Instagram, that's going to lay down a good foundation. When you're doing ads, I still see people making this mistake. Uh, you got to have what is going on, when and where. The, the time, the, the day, the month. Yeah. I still see big arcades just not, not putting that Just say, there. come play in our just, tournament. Just come play in our tournament. And people are like responding on Facebook going, well, when is it? <laughs> Where do I go? Yeah, I'm not from here. That's the basic stuff. Yeah. And, and I know this is hard and it isn't for everybody. Get your personality out there. Make videos. You know, if, if you're boring, feature some of your players. Because I can guarantee you, if you are running a pinball arcade, there are some <laughs> characters out there. So, uh, yeah, give, give it a little personality. It's, I mean, this is, it's just marketing 100. Yeah, I think a lot of people are really, like, uh, they get tightened up and they get very mm-hmm. formal with it, like afraid to 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 showcase who sure. they are. For sure. Um, and, and and it is tough. When, when I first started doing internet marketing, man, I was on on, on MySpace. Yeah. You know, and then, you and Tom. Yeah, me and Tom. We're still friends today. <laughs> uh, still got the whiteboard. But, uh, but so we had. Uh, I was working at a packaging company, and I I was doing uh a daily so i was actually doing it behind their backs they had no idea i was promoting their stuff on on i created a facebook page for them a twitter and instagram and one thing i noticed was when i was when i was doing the promotions i would i would do everything on the fly they tell you not to do that like set your whole calendar up i still mm-hmm. do everything on the fly to this day and it really the the mood i was in at the time really uh, affected things and so I know it's very difficult to put yourself out there, but, you know, just do it, you know, it, just do the basics, an image with uh, dates, times, specials, drink specials, um, and a nice little write-up, uh, you know, uh, play around with AI a little bit. If, you, if you're not good at writing, the, there are, uh, what is it? A chat, chat GPT. Chat can. GPT can write you, tell it to write you a, a social post and p- put the details in there and just use that thing. Um, yeah, but that's about it. So I think I can check that off. Do you have anything to add to that about how awesome I am? <laughs> that, that was my favorite part. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm surprised we didn't focus more on that part. Like yep. the marketing really secondary, but For the sure. awesomeness. Let's talk about that. But I think that awesomeness is key with all mm. of this because you do have a very big personality. Um, it, Thank you. you. You just do. Mm-hmm. And it, it really shows and that you're not afraid like you know you you wake up like hey i feel like doing this and you know sometimes my eyes get big like oh god what you know you just roll with it this is yeah. this is who, who I, you are and, and really who we are um and you know the the electric bat has a personality and it's nice that we get to see it thank you i know i do i i i uh Sometimes I'm on that razor's edge. Yeah, sometimes you're yeah. way over it. Sometimes I'm... <laughs> I, I post stuff you would never want to post. But it, 100%. But when it works, you're like, holy shit. Yeah, look I'm at like, that. how about that? Um, yeah, and and uh, uh, also, I mean, if you post it, if you're, if you're promoting your bar and arcade restaurant, uh, post a lot. How often? You know, um, it, it really depends on how much time you have. Mm-hmm. how creative you you are um at least once a day okay and then um 
but I would say if somebody who's really getting into it wants to hit it hard, you know, two to three times a day is good. As long as it's good stuff and it's meaningful. Right. It's not filler. You don't want to have the right. same ad, but, you know, run it every week or whatever. No, no, no. Yeah. You don't want to see all have, the have same fresh, stuff. But even simple stuff like if you have, if there's a bar, uh, a photo of, of a drink, you know, just a photo. Hey, is it, this is happy hour. It can be as simple as that. Mm -hmm. Photo drink appetizer you know here, here's the special um you know so simple stuff like that works too and especially if you're in a pinball arcade all that cool art and those yeah. machines everywhere cool photography is where it's at and uh, don't be afraid to hire somebody bring it bring a photographer a videographer and if you're not good with it hire them for the day to shoot a bunch of content and just tell them to give you the the raw footage and you can chop it up and have some fun with it Mm -hmm. And when you say posts, do you mean like posts, not just not like a story every day on Instagram? You mean like a actual post, an yeah. actual post yeah, on Instagram and stories are great. Uh, you can do all kind of stuff with that, but that's uh, we'll, a whole other thing. We'll deal with that okay. later. Separate episode. Um, if you have marketing questions, I think we would eventually like to do one that's oh, just kind of dedicated to this. Absolutely. Because you do get a lot of questions about this. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so send them electric bad arcade at gmail.com discord there you have it. the usual places to contact us next on the docket yeah venom it's brian eddie's best game that's not called attack from mars <laughs> uh, who, sa who said that that's a quote that. that's a quote from uh rachel bass right yeah it yeah. is a great game i do and and that medieval has is certainly a very charming game mm -hmm. right um and it would be very uh, that was sort of tongue-in-cheek those medieval and afm are probably my favorite Brian Eddy games but right. Venom I think has there's there's something about the leveling up that I'm loving and I I like the shots some people feel the ramps are a little steep mm -hmm. um I say play better <laughs> there you go I've heard uh most people have loved it and said it's like the shots are simple mm -hmm. we've had a, a couple people thought they were like difficult and and you need to backhand them, but it's I mean, still I'm, new too. It's still new, but uh, you know I'm seeing uh, players who are not tournament players, and they're in there playing some some folks I know, and they're getting like two hundred million on their first ball. Yeah, you know, th mm -hmm. so very approachable game and mm -hmm. cool. Um, great job, guys at Stern. You guys uh, once again knocked it out of the park. I'm I'm really loving this one, and everybody is loving leveling up their characters and and opening uh, i mean uh, unlocking you can unlock uh, captain america wolverine i think the hulk yeah, yeah i think chewie unlocked hulk that, last yeah. night i think i saw that somewhere yeah you can unlock stuff i like unlocking things it's like presents right on right on okay moving right along ifpa flyer <laughs> <laughs> oh i have it, this in the other room it ships with uh <laughs> so we unboxed our venom and usually we throw away, you know, there's the little bag that that tells you how to set it up. And, you know, Kale and I have done this plenty of times. We don't need the instructions on, you know, how to how to level a game. But at this time, for whatever reason, I thought, like, I'm going to go through this and see if they actually, like, what are they telling people now? Mm -hmm. I thought maybe it had changed since, you know, since we'd done it so many times before. I pulled out, there's an IFPA flyer. It looks like it is like a 20th generation copy. I mean, this thing is just full of like static artifacts, all that sort of stuff. And it's talking about increase your profits. Hmm. The I, you know, join the IFPA, use the IFPA. There, it exists in over 17 countries. Hmm. And it has up right now. It's it's got over 7,000. 500 players wow so this is like an eight-year-old flyer there's no much no? more than that because i think i've been an ifpa for 10 years and my mm -hmm. ifpa number is twenty thousand and change so the the deal is you, you probably have some guy there who's been working at stern for 30 years yeah he's, he's on the assembly line he's at he's at the tail end of it <laughs> <laughs> and he has a an an inbox. It's just a stack of these old IFPA flyers, and he's just he's taping them to every machine as it goes out. He's probably been doing it forever, and, that, and it's just like 
uh, you know, it's like old hat. It's a uh, so, but when they move, habit now, when they move the factory, do they not like th- they take? Th- okay, now make sure you grab <laughs> the fifteen-year-old IFPA flyers. Like, why have these not been updated? Remember how we we were looking through old? I think it was an old manual, mm-hmm. and it still listed Jersey Jack as a Stern distributor. Oh wow! And this was like years and years, and you, you know, it was something that had just come out. It just. Uh-huh. Sometimes things don't. You know, there's a lot of balls, plates in the air, whatever the phrase yeah. is at Stern. Ball it's plates. Ball plates. There's some ball plates in the but air. I think this is cool. The, 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 these little, these relics, these Easter eggs. Yeah. And it, it, and it's it, this seems to always happen in the industry. You find something yeah. even when we're going through like old uh, tool, like boxes of parts we've purchased from people getting out of the business. It's like, oh, look at this old thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's it's very much a part of the industry and the culture of pinball and. Uh, <laughs> It's classic. You know? <laughs> to, to, to just like forget about <laughs> stuff. That's part of the culture. So I think uh, we'll take a picture of it and throw it up for the people that haven't unboxed yeah. a new game recently. We'll, we'll post it on, on Facebook just or something. Just how a, a flyer funny. from a very, very, very long time ago. If you get uh, one, hold on to it. It might be worth some, something, huh? Yeah, Josh Sharp yeah. may want to... May wanna, he might want it back. Might want send to a, send a new <laughs> one to the factory floor. Oh, what's coming up? At the bat, any new games, tournaments? We do have a tournament coming up. Yeah, Roland's Hellhounds of Libra. All right, that's this Sunday. That's this Sunday, and that's that's you, a cool one. So right, I was about to ask you. It's a little different than any of our other tournaments. Yeah, yeah, and that's great. I love that mm-hmm. these people are like we're doing all kinds of things. So this is going to be a cash prize tournament, and the qualifying is max match play. Okay. So that's a head-to-head tournament, and I don't know how many rounds it is. 10, 15, 12, somewhere in there. There's, but there's there's a really good description. If you go to our Facebook page or Instagram, Roland, uh, he lays everything out. Roland's Yeah, d- Roland is running tournament. this, yeah. and he's, he's thought through the details. Mm-hmm. So that's the qualifying, and then the finals is Amazing Race. So basically you're going through each game and trying not to have the low... You're trying to have the highest score... It's a kind of it's a format that that I have not ever actually played. I mm-hmm. was out of commission the last time you did it, so I'm really looking forward to playing it. And this is a cash prize, and I like that what he did is so if you're under the top, I believe it's 250 in the IFPA, you pay ten dollars to enter. If you're above that level, you pay fifteen dollars. So Very it kind of cool. it kind of hedges the pot. Okay. And so there's going to be an A division and B division final. So there's there's a little bit of cash prize for B division too. So there's there's something for everybody. He was very thoughtful in the way that he's doing this tournament. So we'll report back on it next time around. Very uh, cool. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, I I'm am too. Bring it. Uh, you and I always have a little competition. We, we yeah. don't we don't worry about everybody else. It's it's always I'm beat you. <laughs> We'll, yeah. s- we'll see about that. I'm yeah. kind of, I'm kind of on a roll to tell you the truth. Remind me how that uh, yeah. that bounty knockout went this weekend. I remember you were taking a picture of me. I can't I I can't remember where. I, oh, I was 11th. Yeah. What was I? You, third. That's correct. You're third, which is amazing. <laughs> I mean, because you you're going up against some serious yeah. serious competition. Yeah, Adam, it was a great day. Adam Horton won. Yeah. And then Pete. Yeah, Tacoma was, Pete. Tacoma Pete got second. Man, he was winning all kind of stuff. He did great. And um, yeah, what a great time! Mm-hmm. What a great time. Okay, so Sunday, this coming Sunday, Roland's uh, what's it called? Hellhounds. Hellhounds of Libra. Of Libra pinball tournament mm-hmm. at the live at the bat. Yep, live at the bat. Good times. Okay, moving right along. This is from a top fan on Facebook. Oh, a top, top fan. fan. He's got, he got a little diamond next to his name. What do you do to be a top fan? You just interact a lot? I think you just got to talk to us a bunch. Okay. Uh, All right. And like our stuff and comment. And uh, you too can be a top fan. <laughs> uh, Marty Martinez has got a question for us. Uh, you, you ready for this one? First name, same as the last. <laughs> oh, Marty, Marty Martinez? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. You like that? You think that's a real name? I don't know. That's a cool name. Uh I would love to ask Rachel how she discovered pinball and her take on pinball art and artists. Because you're you're okay. an artist. That I, I think that's uh, that's why he's asking. I see. You're a very accomplished artist. Thank you. And he wants your opinion. Well, I guess first, uh, how do you discover pinball? Same way everyone else did. I existed in the 90s. 
right everyone else of our generation uh-huh. um what, what was the first pinball machine you remember coming across adams that's the, adams family that's the first wow. one i remember there were more before that but that's mm-hmm. the one that really um that i you know really remember mm-hmm. playing okay yeah cool adams and you uh, own that machine I do. You you bought that machine. It's one of your favorite machines. You bought it and you still own it. Paid three thousand dollars. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Man, if we if we could go back and just buy all of those machines, I'll tell you what, we can't. <laughs> 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 so tell me, he he wants to know about your take on pinball art and artists, like across the eras, maybe, because Who, who's your Who's your favorite pinball artist? It's probably Python, huh? You, you don't like Python? Come on. I thought you liked that hand-drawn... Uh, come on. You like Python. Oh, you're trying I love to, some Python. You're just trying to put words in my mouth. I, yeah. uh, you know. Um, I I actually really like kind of the EM, like, triangle people art, which is okay. the absolute opposite of the mm-hmm. art style that I am. I sure. also really like, you know, like... Well, and I, I mean, there's something charming about the really terrible pinball art of the 80s. I sure. mean, it's almost all just universally god awful. Especially the manuals. Yeah. Like, yeah, the manuals, like, they just let their kids draw it. Right. I mean, it, it's it like, like this. Basically, the, the guy in the mail room. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. Can you hold a pencil? Hey, <laughs> do what you think a Gorgar is. <laughs> like, that's, it's, oh, it's. And so there's, that's I mean, great. there's something quaintly atrocious about Mm -hmm. all that which is awesome but i think he's asking about like right now like zombie yeti Mm -hmm. and all that stuff Mm -hmm. um i like it i i like it it doesn't franchi also franchi Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who is a big fan of of you uh well he's such a big fan of you he put a little easter egg in the beatles machine right I am on the Beatles play yeah. field, yes. If you, if you own a Beatles machine, go see if you can find Rachel. She's holding up a sign uh, waiting for the Beatles to get off a plane, I think, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, yeah. It says yeah. I love Paul. Oh, yeah. So. There. I made it real yeah. easy for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, where's Waldo there? Um, yeah, I love, I love all of that art. But I think I would really, what I'm waiting to see that I haven't seen yet is some... 80s heavy metal art i mean the the magazines not like oh for not sure. the band like just like for that like pure sci-fi fantasy beautifully rendered um now, this isn't probably not going to happen because because of the 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 medium and the substrate right the amount of time it would take they right. couldn't afford to pay the artists to make that right and could you imagine having to do a revision because the license holder uh didn't like something and you're right you're, you're painting an oil paint right and yeah. and that's the thing is i would really love this to be um actual like oil paint acrylic paint mm-hmm. watercolor whatever mm-hmm. the the natural medium of that artist is and have that scanned in and transferred versus having to do it digitally which they're all done dirty donnie does do hand-drawn line art right um for the most part, if not all of it. For sure. Um, but I, I want to see the whole thing done like that. So that's what I'm holding out for. And that's the pinball art that I want to see. Cool. So I want to see... I would, a, I would love to see that also. I want to see a Dune machine. Oh. That uh, we, be amazing. we resurrect for Zeta. <laughs> so let's necromancers out there. Let's, uh, let's you, get... You know, I want to see... I want a Dune machine with Mobius artwork. Oh, that would be cool, that would be too. Bananas, right? Oh, that would be great. Yeah, I would love then that. Then maybe there's the different editions, <laughs> right? You get the Mobius edition, the Frazetta edition. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. We're going to move on. Oh, this is from our friend Seth. Yeah, I saw... I didn't read this yet. Yet I saw you snuck this in here. Oh, yeah, yeah. This, this was a, sent. from he the emailed. email. Yeah. We love Seth. Mm-hmm. He, uh, we actually, we chatted with him. You know, you know what's crazy? We, we could have met him. We, we were at Indisc before. I think it was Indisc. Or it was one of the um, events at the Pinball Museum in Banning. Oh, okay. And we were actually there together, but we didn't know each other, so we didn't uh, talk well, we to didn't each meet other. Up. We didn't meet up, but we got to know each other over social media 
since then, and he has been operating machines or, or renting machines. He's 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 gotten in the business. That's cool. That's cool. So we may have had, been in line with him for hot dogs or something, but didn't for know sure. who he was. For sure. Um, so he said, local skeezers been <laughs> bugging me about when my machines will be paid off so I can finally drop them the 50 cents. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> Well, I, th- I think what he's saying is there are people playing the machines and uh, and they're like, you know, certainly you, this Iron Maiden has been paid off. Can't we drop the price? Like he's he, he's what? He, like he's milking the audience. Let me get this straight. Mm-hmm. Seth has people that believe that if his machines have been paid off. They should get a deal. They should be cheaper. Right. I want to talk to these people about their cars, their homes. Right, right. And can anything we, else of value. Your, your, your car's it's paid off. Paid off. Can I borrow it? I w- no, well, no, no, no. I don't want to borrow it. I want to buy it off them for like... Fair market yeah. value. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Fair market value. I want no. it to be cheaper because it's paid off. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I want I want your forerunner for $5,000, please. <laughs> That makes no sense at all. I know. So, so basically, his question is: Do we reduce the price of play once we've uh, recouped the original game purchase price? I mean, if my goal was a net zero, but like if we were independently wealthy, mm-hmm. or we're, that does, that just doesn't it even make doesn't any make sense. sense. You have to. Uh, I mean, they they cost like maintenance okay. is way more than people right, think so it is. Bottom line, no, we don't do that. No, and nobody should do that, and nobody should expect anybody else to do that. But he's gonna have to. He's gonna have to explain this. To okay, these guys. so here's how I would explain it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would parts. use a couple of parts well chosen uh, fingers in my explanation. Yeah. Yeah. Pinkies. Um, yeah, that's not them. Um, Okay, I go to the grocery store. The building is paid off. They own the grocery store. Mm-hmm. Are my apples half price? No. Well, no, they had to ship them. They had to pay the farmers. They. But, it, I mean, it doesn't even matter, like, budgeting. No, no don't but do that. I, Nobody I, should have to do that. I think it doesn't prob- make sense. The problem is most people who play pinball machines, I don't know if most, a lot of people who play machines, they do not understand what's under the hood and the maintenance involved, and the cost of parts. And the cost of maintenance. I mean, you figure Mm -hmm. there's four of us working on Mm -hmm. pinball machines every day of the week. I mean, like, do do they think that Seth should work for free? Yeah, they probably do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do they work for free? I mean, we get it. This is one of those things. They may not even work anymore. I don't know with the, the way they're thinking. Get off my lawn. So... No. In, a, in a nutshell, no, we don't do that, and then we've uh, told you the reasons. Um, also, you got to pay rent. Yeah, I got to pay. <laughs> like, if people knew how much it costs to like run an arcade, like it is right. It is not. And as you expand, the costs go way up. Way you know, up. What do you, you got to pay for you, insurance for people? You got to get. You, you get a fifth air conditioner. Food costs, alcohol costs, part pinball parts. No we're fair not, wages. We're actually going to raise the price. <laughs> yeah, now that we think about it. <laughs> This is way too... Okay, he, Seth has another question. I w- Seth, get back to me whenever you talk, or, or people yeah, who we, are asking, who think that that's like a, a thing that update. you should do. I just want someone to explain to me why you should drop the price of playing a machine after it's paid off. Yeah, okay. No, we're going to move on. Okay. None of that. Uh, another question from Seth. want to know. Do you think Insider Connected has helped drive play, or is it just a byproduct of them being newer Stearns? Uh, it's helped drive play, hundred yeah, yeah, percent. It has the question. because we had new, uh-huh. we've had new Stearns before Insider Connected. We mm-hmm. have new Stearns still post Insider Connected, and we For have, sure. yeah, and it's it has absolutely helped because I get to see my name on that leaderboard. Mm-hmm. It drives me to play it like. I, yeah, it drives me to play. When we're there, yeah. it, it gives us a goal. Because when we're we're like we're not just like, hey, let's play each other on this yeah. whatever XYZ game. We're like, let's tr- both try yeah. to get on the leaderboard. Yeah, we want to get on the leaderboard. Yeah. And you have the data. You've seen this is actually works. But we can, you can also see it in the arcade. It is important if you are an operator uh, or own an arcade, uh, put a, 
uh, TV up there always displaying. Yeah. This. It's inexpensive. Those, those TVs in a wall mount, I mean, you could probably get it for like 200 bucks. Put that up there, uh, attach an uh, internet connected device that, that can show the insider connected. Um, it, 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 not only do you have data to back this up, we see it when we, when we go into the arcade. So many people, even, you know, not hardcore tournament players, they, this is even like better for casuals. They, they, cut, they cut around the corner, they, they look up, the first thing they do is look up at the screen. It's like, hey, which leaderboard can I get on? Yeah. yeah. And did somebody beat my score? For sure. Mm-hmm. If you if it's just a location where you have a couple of machines, you might not want to invest in or even have to worry about putting a, a TV up with Insider Connected. Pr- print a, a QR code that goes to your location's uh, leaderboard and laminate that and, and put it next to the machine so people can scan it and they and they can see the uh, Insider Connected leaderboard for your location on their their phone. But but like I say, let's. I still think you you want that TV because I want to see my name oh, for up there. Like I want a little ghost Rachel Best up case on scenario, the wall, yeah. saying, "What's up?" You're right. You're right. One hundred percent. Okay, where are we? I just I hit I hit the wrong button and now I ended up. Oh no. Um, Man. We can we can skip that one. We touched on that a little bit. Oh, this is a really good one. Lift table, dollies, pin skates, escaleras, new tilt and truck lift table, yay or nay? Man. We've we've used all those. We well, I haven't used the tilt and truck. I've seen videos of people mm-hmm. using those and I've been jealous. I really I would like one of those. Right, those right. look cool. We don't have one right yeah. now. Um, I actually I, I misspoke. We I have not used that either. I, I just thought he was talking about like a lift gate on a pickup. <laughs> is that is that not <laughs> no, it's not an actual it. device? Yeah, it's like it's like our our dolly. Is it like an escalera? No, what it is is it like it goes like it's like a table combined with a do- like it it goes Whoa. Yeah, I saw it's. It looks very cool. I think it's expensive, um, mm. and I think we'll probably end up getting one pretty soon anyway. Because <laughs> we're not getting, despite the fact that you're real good at choking people, we're uh-huh. not getting any I younger. Don't wanna, I don't lift we don't need machines. to be like lifting all this stuff so much. Um, we use mostly we use the Harbor Freight, uh, the modified um, jack. Yeah. And it's a it's a, it's like a motorcycle engine lift, right? Yeah, Something I think like that's that. what it's built for. It's the one you know that everybody has, and you have to like mm-hmm. weld the ha- handlebar thing onto some hinges so it doesn't mm-hmm. get in the way. That one we use that the most. We also have pin skates that we modified. Yes. Uh, the downside of pin skates is that those casters for home use totally fine, right? You'll mm-hmm. you'll be fine using those for as much as you need to move machines around the house, um, and that's what I originally bought it for. But whenever you start using them in a as like work equipment those casters are going to fail very quickly so we went there's caster stores in town we're lucky we have we actually have a store that sells nothing but casters nothing but casters specializes and they help they helped us out so Um, we put some very uh some mm -hmm. some nice casters on there that are uh rated for heavier usage for sure and we use those sometimes a, too a lot. yeah they're, they're, they're so convenient especially to keep in the in the back of the truck yeah but we can always move a machine mm-hmm. without needing a heavy dolly they're great yeah uh, especially if you have like a, a step to go up into mm-hmm. whatever building you're going into those those harbor freight dollies those weigh like a hundred and something pounds you right. can't just like jerk it up into the building mm-hmm. um pin skates so those are the two that we use the most but i would like the the tilt and lift table thing for sure we don't there's no stairs in arizona basically we don't have use for an escalera right Um, i've used an escalera mm -hmm. and it was great um because i had i was at a pinball show and i had to move a bunch of glass and uh somebody somebody let me borrow one it was either larry or zach i can't remember who owned uh, who owned flipping flipping out at the time time. but uh man it i mean it picked up a lot of i mean glass is heavy it might have been like a thousand pounds i mean it was it was insane um and we we brought it into the uh the showroom and sold it in there cool that was a lot of fun thank you for the questions seth yeah thank you 
All right, moving on. This is from the the email. Uh, he has the a, email bag. The email bag. Cleaning games question. Mm. I was cleaning a game with Novus Two. Okay. And an old timer started to chastise me, oh. claiming that I was ruining the play field as Novus was basically sandpaper. He claimed that the way to clean g- g- games was with Windex and then wax the play field. And that is what will keep the game in the best condition. So my question is this. How do you clean your games at uh, Electric Bat? Do you want, you want to take this? I, yeah. I have some opinions on this, and I'm yeah. sure you do too. Man, how often Let's do we hear this? Let's hope they're the same, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So this was when we were working at Marco at, on the show floor. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is like the one thing. You might as well just ask people how, how they feel about, I don't know, Trump, some kind of like hot button thing, like this gets people or whatever, um, gets people worked up. So old timers, because those original play fields didn't have the clear coat and things, you you did want to clean it a little more carefully and Mm -hmm. keep the wax on there to protect it. For sure. As we moved into the modern era, we get the diamond plate and now just, you know, the clear coat. Mm -hmm. It's got a harder surface. Um, I still, at the bat, the bat, once again, we get way more plays than what a home user is going to have mm-hmm. on their games. I still, when I'm cleaning games, first thing I do, dry microfiber, nothing on it at all. Just to try and, because there's all that dust, the coil dust and what else, that you can just lift right off. Once that, you know, then then spray some Novus One because mm-hmm. Novus One is, I don't know what's in it. Do you know what, what the uh, base of the cleaner is for that? I don't. No. Someone will let but us it, know. But it's not abrasive. It's not abrasive. It's a spray. Mm-hmm. Um, and if that will take care of it, that's where I stop. And mm-hmm. I prefer to to do that. And then, um, but once again, we get heavy play. Novus Two does need to be used at some point on our play fields for sure because if you don't like there's no amount of elbow grease and novus one that will get <laughs> right. off 2000 plays yeah you know like sure. you can't like intermittent cleaning you can get away with just novus one and stuff but mm-hmm. the the high wear areas you do have to use some novus two from time to time I do try to use it, um, I won't say sparingly, but I don't just like run for the Novus 2 if mm-hmm. I see just a little bit of dirt, right? right. Um, because it is slightly abrasive, it's a polish, um, mm-hmm. that's 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 how I handle it. Right. We tend not to wax the new games. Mm-hmm. We do wax all of the older solid state games. Um, mm-hmm. And I think John Chappell, I think I've seen him pulling out the wax. So some of the newer games may have some <laughs> wax on them that I don't, I don't, yeah. yeah, like, cool. You want to put some wax on it, put some wax on it. That's for sure. Um, and the way this guy, the, uh, the old timer, mm-hmm. he's not wrong. I mean, it's fine. A little, little Windex and, and, and some wax is totally cool. Um, Novus 2 is abrasive. Uh, but it's it's fine on modern machines with that uh, you know the finish the the clear coat finish they put mm-hmm. on those. Um, do not use Novus three. I would never use Novus three. That is basically <laughs> like toothpaste with sand in it. Do you remember the guy, the Indiana Jones? Yeah, there was a uh, when we worked at uh, Marco Specialties, there was a guy that called and he took the paint off of his Indiana Jones uh, and the Williams Indiana yeah. Jones and. Uh, Bummer. Nothing you can do yeah, after it, that. Yeah, it doesn't. You can't like reverse it. Right. Go counterclockwise. Right. And it's put like the it's back like on. it's like the what's the stuff you put in your tub? The, the oh, powder. Yeah, 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 like comet or comet. something. Comet. It's basically like that with uh, like in lotion or something. <laughs> So, yeah, it, it'll destroy stuff. Novus 3 goes in a polish or a tumbler. Don't fine. ever use it on a game. I would never use Novus 2 on an older machine that uh, does not have any kind of clear. Uh, you will you will take the paint off of it. Um, I think if you've got like super deep ball swirls mm-hmm. and you're trying to just get that off, just like if you're using it very carefully, but I would never use it as just a, hey, it's Wednesday, let's put some Novus 2 on 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 the Sinbad. Don't, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> right. Um, right. Yeah. So we, we right. are, it's good to see mm-hmm. that we're on the same page right. about that. And, and, and as far as waxing, like, 
you can do whatever you want to do. We personally don't wax everything because uh, I, I believe it, it, it makes everything dirtier. When you, when you get in as many plays as we have, some of that wax is still on the, on the table and it's collecting uh, bits of rubber, uh, dust from coil stops, all, you know, all these metal shavings that are all over. It's, it's collecting all that and gunking up the play field where uh, it makes it just a little harder to clean up. And you so, mean that like almost on a microscopic level. There's not like chunks sure. of wax around sure. our play yeah. fields. It's yeah. just like that's that's the function uh, of the wax to kind of fill those right. tiny. Same um, reason we don't use grease on all kind of moving components. Oh, that would, yeah. What if we started using grease on the play field? I've seen people do it. Like just Chris go up. <laughs> woo, woo, woo. All that right. kind of goes along the lines of the people. You know, there's that whole uh, debate about whether or not you should clear coat old Older classic machines. games because the ball doesn't roll, mm -hmm. it slides. That's a whole other... Do we have any that are like that? We do not. Although the Stern Dracula that I redid oh. is clear coated. Uh-huh. Um... Well, I guess yes, that would be the one. Right. But that's it was clear coded for a very good reason. Yeah, it, it needed. It, it had to yeah. be saved. Uh, yeah. So. Okay. Good deal. Hope we answered your question, Ben Griffiths. Oh, hello. Uh, <laughs> um, well, it's hard to say, Ben Griffiths. 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 I like. It. I like it. Thank you, Ben. I appreciate you guys listening and uh, sending in your questions. Okay, this is from Redliner seventy eight hundred. Oh, Redliner. He's he's running like at seventy eight hundred RPM. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, do many people? Is this from? Is that from Facebook? I can't tell. Or is that Instagram? Oh no, that's that's YouTube. That's YouTube. That's YouTube. Uh, thank you, man. This is this has been great. Um, all you folks that are leaving comments and asking questions. It's really and, cool. Um, and and loving this thing. I mean, we just, we kind of just did this on your birthday. Didn't expect really anybody to watch it. And it, it blew up. <laughs> we got we got messages recently from Austra all over the nation and then Australia. Yeah. Uh, Italy. Yeah. And Spain. That's we're, that's we're international. International. Inter the international worldwide. bats. Well, like, man, I tell you what, we are blowing up. Best Arcade in Phoenix. We're gonna we're gonna get uh, some more accolades soon. Yeah. Best arcade in the nation. Come on, Italians, fly out here. <laughs> okay, from Redliner seventy eight hundred. We have right. a, uh, this is from YouTube. Do many people leave with tokens and never return to use them? In other words, is your total token pool constantly leaking and needing to be replenished? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, we have to order new tokens. Mm -hmm. We order maybe four times a year. Quarterly, right. I think we order uh, a whole lot of tokens. For sure. Um, you, know, you know what's funny? I had uh, some folks stop us. Uh, I was um, I was refilling the token machine, and they said, thank you. We love it when you polish the tokens. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> polish the tokens? And I was like, oh, he means... When he sees the really shiny ones, and that's when when we get a new order in and we fill them up, and he he know. thought we were polished. That that's what you would use the Novus yeah. three for. Yeah, polishing the tokens. Oh, and here's a little Easter egg. This is very cool. If you get some tokens from the Electric Bat Arcade, and if you get one that only says Tempe, that's from the first. I think two the first two, two runs. Two, that's from the first two runs. Of tokens, all, all the rest of them say Tempe and Flagstaff. Yeah, so they are vintage, and they're still float. I still see them. They're still floating around. Isn't that cool? It is the crazy that there's tokens some tokens are still in circulation. So if you get those, uh, I mean, still use them in the machine. Don't take them home. But <laughs> yes, <it's, laughs> we do get uh, leakage of the tokens. Mm -hmm. We have to buy them. Um, we have to buy them four times a year. So people do buy them and they take them home, which is okay mm -hmm. they they cost us a little bit less than 25 cents each so that right. doesn't that's not a huge harm we would rather you you know kind of keep we, playing we, them. we want to get our money's worth out of yeah it we want yeah. we want we want them to be used a lot um taking them home would be a little bit better than using 
another arcade's tokens yeah, don't, in our arcade. That's a or don't take our arcades and use it in, yeah. a, in another arcade. Like, be sure you support the local arcades and use their tokens and their machines because we all put in a lot of hard work to make this happen and make a fun place for you guys to play and, and hang out at. Yeah, yeah, that's that's important. But yes, we do have to replace them. Mm-hmm. That's, I love, I love that's, getting those new. Mm-hmm. I always wonder what the UPS guy thinks. <laughs> he thinks what it, it's because so heavy. It is so heavy. Like, Each token box is thirty-five pounds. Right, the whole pallet of them. And then but, you got a pallet. But but our UPS guy is, is solid. He's Sturdy, a big dude. Yeah, good. Maybe that's why he's our UPS guy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I appreciate it. Uh, Redliner seventy-eight hundred. Thank you for enjoying the podcast on YouTube. Is it a podcast on YouTube? Yep. Uh, do you call the podcast? I do. Uh, oh, okay. The, the, the vidcast? It's not, it's not, oh, like, like, a, like a TV show, a program. Oh, that's better. It's a program. It's a program. Program. We're watching our programs. Yes. Yeah, All we're right. a program. Moving right along. Dan the man. We love Dan. Yes. Dan, Dan the and man. Rachel. Uh, so we have, uh, here's, he actually says mailbag question. I like that. Oh. He's, he's real clear. Yeah. So Because he knows I get confused. <laughs> you know? <laughs> He's, he's Dan, spent Dan some time knows me. with you. Dan the man. Dan knows me. Dan is, uh, this is a message from, oh, this is from our Discord. Oh, okay. And if you want to be in our Discord, uh, you got to figure out how to get on there. It's a secret, isn't it? It's not a secret. It's not a secret. The, the, the secret's out. Where, where are the links? They're, they're in some, uh, the descriptions on some of the podcasts. Uh, we should put it on our website. We'll put it on our website. We'll do a whole new thing on the website. and Because uh, I know some of you have been having trouble uh, finding it, especially if you're on YouTube. Because right now, YouTube will not let us put links in the description of our videos. So I've been dropping it in the comments. But uh, they, they want to get a, to know us a little bit better, make sure we're not shady. I don't blame them. <laughs> you know? Pinball's a weird thing. Dan the man, mailbag question. Here we go. Really enjoy the stream from the state finals and the Walt Wood superhuman pinball feats. I can't wait till he comes back. Oh, man. Got to get him back on stream. Um, What are the plans for Electric Bat streaming? Would love to be able to watch league night, Sunday tournaments, and Mark's three-day tournament coming up. Mm. That's going to be exciting. Also, Roland's tournament on Sunday. Yeah. Uh, uh, machines five okay that that's the that's the one question streaming that's mostly your you, that, deal that, you want me to talk about it so i'd like you to talk about we, it we uh actually our last stream was we did jurassic park yeah it wasn't really a plan thing i, no. I you know i messaged roland see if he wanted to come out and a couple of was, other people showed up when we got the new code that would the enable new, co-op we played we played some co-op stuff super fun uh and after that we had uh, so many people enjoying it we wanted to do it every sunday but um every sunday after that stuff came up whether it was tournaments or we were out of town uh so we, we don't have a regular schedule we want to get back into it um yeah. but we really want to build a rig um so I'm not like setting up tripods and lights all the time. And it, I mean, it takes like about an hour to uh, set everything up. So we want to invest in a rig. Yeah. We do have good news from Mark's uh, big three-day tournament. Matt and Amy. Of are, Aimless Pinball. They're coming in town. Cool. And they are going to stream it. So uh, thank you guys for uh, excellent for doing that. Yep. Yeah, so... Dan and everybody else out there will be able to watch Mark's three big three day tournament. They they just streamed the uh, the pinball at the lab. Yeah, that was, that was cool. cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very, very, very cool. Uh, we're, go, we're going on to uh, Casanova. This is in our Discord. Ooh. Casanova. Ooh. He's got like a like a bug or an eagle or or a bird. Pardon what me. Is, what is that in his profile picture? I, don't I wonder, know. maybe like a dog flying? Oh, pig. It's a pig. Oh, is it a pig? pig? No, I don't know. Pug, anyway, pig. great debate question. This is for you because I, I really don't have an opinion on this. Mm. Uh, is it worth it to do Molex or will IDC work just fine? I guess when your IDC fails, you know, some people say yes. uh, change your connectors. And for those of you who have never opened a machine, this has to do with the the connectors. You know, you have all this wire in a pinball machine, 
and you're either using an ID, basically, uh, IDC connector or a Molex connector. And a lot of people tell you to, when the IDC it's connector... It's upgrade to yeah. a Molex. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say when your the IDCs fail or something happens and you have to rebuild them, just go ahead and change it all to Molex. Uh, what do you think about that? Okay, well... I I do do that. I swap it over to Molex. If, if you're unfamiliar with how this works, an IDC connector, basically you're pressing the wire into a little slot that has some kind of blades in there. So when you press it in, it cuts through the wire insulation and that's how the connection is made. Mm -hmm. um, so the connection is really only made at the points where the wire is touching those blades. And... Um, it, you know, there's nothing crimped in there. It's just the pressure of the wire maintaining that connection. So over time, the thought is that gets a little bit loose mm -hmm. and the connection is not as stable. With a Molex connector, you are crimping on uh, a, a terminal that's going to go into and that kind of clicks in to the to the connector and especially if it's the trifurcon kind then there's more points of contact and the little thing that wedges it in holds it in there a little bit better so the thought okay. is that it's a more stable connection um, however those idc connectors generally last for 30 plus years 30 Decades, to, yeah. yeah so you're probably fine if you want to just use the mm -hmm. IDC connector, a new a new IDC connector. I think you'd be okay. I'm not sure it's, with the Molex, especially for home use, right? Yeah, if it's not get yeah, yeah, especially for home use. But I mean, age is age. Whether it's I guess mm -hmm. heat is happening more as the game is on. If if it's mm -hmm. out on location, sure. I think this debate is not as there's not as much there there as p as surprise some things people get worked up <laughs> about in pinball for sure um i think you're fine with either we do do the molex though we we liked we being me you. goes in and like my arm gets sore because you're sitting there in like the back box holding up mm -hmm. all of those wires crimping stuff doing new connectors but um i do that and i think there's something satisfying about seeing you know the whole new Oh yeah, yeah. Whenever and I can tell when I've done it. New white connectors. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can tell when you've done it too. You open up the back box and, and you're looking at an older game. You see that like that's all Molex. Oh, mm. that's probably not the problem. I've clearly already tackled that. For sure. So. Thank you, Casanova, on our Discord. Thanks, Casanova. Thank Great question. I like when they get down to like a really specific yeah, pinball nerd stuff. It's good for the program. We, we, like, we like talking about that. Uh, next question. And this is also from Discord. Okay. Guttagool. Our boy Guttagool. Uh, he always has, he's always tuning in. He always has great questions. We uh, thank, thank you for playing along. Mm -hmm. uh, merchandising. How important is it to an operation? What's the best ROI? Any new items you can tease Ooh, we actually do have a new item but i don't know if we want to tease it quite yet because because it's, it's not here yet it's in it's in um early stages um so this is this is kind of back to like a marketing question mm -hmm. but you this didn't have anything to do with me you made the iconic electric bat starburst before well before i was into the picture I, I did do the logo. Well, you, you're a marketing person yourself. Explain that, like, like where that come from, and and you also you hooked up the right people with this shirt, so it would be seen on streams, it would be seen at uh, pinball shows. You you have a good marketing mind. But these people were also just our friends, right? And it sure. just worked out that way. So I mean, yes, it it does help to get your stuff in front of people, but mm -hmm. also. Just when you're friends with the people that are in front of the other people, that naturally happens. Right. Um, I think merch is important. I think merch is very important. For one, it gives people a way to support your business. And also because I'm thinking about from my own um, perspective, I the things that I'm excited about, I want to I want to wear the shirt. I want to because mm -hmm. it. It makes me feel good, like, oh, yeah, that those are my people. That's that's right. my store. That's my place. You know, I, I enjoy that whatever it is that, that's on, on the shirt. And I 
I like to have that. Um, but it, you know, it's like a little electric bat club when you, when you've got the shirt and when you go out mm-hmm. and we've, We've been out, and this is the coolest thing that's ever happened for us when we're out and we see people that we have no idea who oh, they are. Yeah. Around Phoenix. Yeah, just like around town, and they're wearing the shirt. And we've and it's never like, seen oh them before. Oh my God, I don't know who that person is, and they're wearing an electric bat for shirt. Sure, for sure. Um, now, as, as far as the ROI goes, it's hard to tell. It's kind of like a billboard. You know? Yeah. When you put up a billboard, you, you know, you're getting calls from it, but you're not sure how much is actually. Uh, what your actual ROI is from that. Um, and the tangible, like, let's say I spend $1,000 making t-shirts. Mm-hmm. How many dollars do I get back? I mean, like, it, it, it's, it's not a money maker. It's more, right? for, it's more for advertising. It's more for advertising yeah. and for fun. Like, yeah. it's just like a, a cool uh, thing to have. For sure. For sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. More uh, from... Gutter Ghoul, uh, I'm, I'm just laughing because he had a little funny comment uh, and he mentioned me. Uh, <laughs> but that, that's not what I'm going to get into here. Uh, wh- what is the rate of failure on machines? In the most recent episode, you said you were there six days a week. Are you seeing multiple games unplayable in that time frame or is it mostly tune-ups? Mostly tune-ups. Um. Yeah, we've got just a, a couple of games will go down mm-hmm. throughout the week. M- mostly it'll be a flipper failure. Right. Um, yeah, so we we don't have too many games going down, but we also spend an insane amount of time doing preventative maintenance. So mm-hmm. that is what keeps them going, right? When, sure, mm-hmm. yeah. So that's it. Yeah. There you couple, have it. There you have it. A couple of games. Thank you, Gutter Ghoul. Mm-hmm. We really appreciate it. Uh, so that's it for the mailbag. Did oh, you, okay. you have anything else to add? Um, I Do we want to talk about tokens and all uh, tokens versus card systems and all that? Or do we want to save that for like the part of the marketing or an, an tokens episode about? Tokens versus card system. Well... Let's see. We're, we're, what are we at here? We're at an hour. We're at, we kind of like to keep it at an hour. Let's, okay. Let's say... Do a teaser. Let's, this is the <laughs> teaser, right? Yeah. Uh, we're going to get into um, uh, tokens and, and quarters versus a card reader system. And uh, Rachel's been doing some research. She uh, talked to a few people. I have hard numbers. Yeah. About uh, the initial costs of the uh, card reader system. Um, and of tokens. Oh, yeah. Initial I mean, cost of tokens. Everything. The, the maintenance, the hours of work it goes into maintaining. Mm-hmm. Uh, the token polishing. Token machine, token <laughs> polishing, ordering tokens um, versus, you know, the, the card system where, you know, somebody else is taking a cut. Somebody else has their hand in, in this. Uh, there's pros and cons to all of it. Yeah. All three have, have pros and cons. Yeah. Good deal. Which is right for you. We're, we're, let's get into it because we have a lot to add. I mean, we could talk for an hour about that, but we yeah. won't. We won't. That'd be boring. It's we'll, coming. We'll talk oh. maybe like twenty-five minutes or so, and then we'll still do some uh, some little comedy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I think? That's you. You. Yeah, You're the comic. I, I, want, I want puppets. I want, you want like, puppets? The, the puppets that pop up, like Mister Rogers, like the King and the like. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, the Fozzie Bear and, and the, you know, they come in. <laughs> okay, like, so we're they, getting and, some Muppets well, explaining and, and, tokens? Well, they, yeah, they ask us pinball questions. Oh, uh, that's the so, next level. So Gutter Ghoul is going to be represented by Fozzie Bear or Grover right. or what, what <laughs> right, have you. Right, right. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, we have uh, Sunday. We have a tournament on Sunday. Roland's tournament. <laughs> And we're going to have a great time there. So it's a really interesting, uh, uh, hey, look at me. Come um, to the tournament. Uh, it's a, a really interesting format. It's going yeah, to be, be a lot of fun. It's going to be super fun. Uh, and you'll be able to play in this yes. one. That's going to be great. And so that will be at noon on Sunday. Uh, registration starts at 1145. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, if you want to know about any other tournaments, go to electricbatarcade.com. And check out the tournament tab, and uh, I think I think we're out. Yeah, uh, send us some more questions. Electric Bat Arcade at Gmail. Yeah. Um, we love questions. I have a lot of answers. You want some? 
You want you to get, various you get, questions. Yeah. Please send questions for her answers. She's ready. She's got them in the pipe. Yeah. They're, they're ready to <laughs> just go out. Uh, special thanks to uh, Marco Specialties and Game Room Goodies. Check them out at uh, GameRoomGoodies.com and MarcoSpecialties.com. Uh, I think even MarcoPinball.com goes to that. I think they have like every every Marco Pinball, Marco Pinball Parts. So uh, many, so many choices. Those guys are great, and uh, thank you so much. The bats are out. Bats out.